So we are in our fifth week of our series, our How Should We Pray series. Today we're going to discuss the line, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, as I was telling the kids, there are many sides to this discussion on forgiveness. So it's not, there's no big black and white answer other than we should just forgive. That's the only black and white part about it, that we are commanded to forgive. But it's not as easy as all that, right? We always find ways to do the bare minimum. I was talking about that in Bible study, right? Humans love to take whatever the rule is we have and figure out what's the least I can do to follow this rule. And it is simple on the one hand to forgive and to be forgiven, but the reality is that it's not always that simple. And understanding every side of the forgiveness equation, it's complex. It's difficult. I can't preach on them all (laughs) today, and it would take me probably months to cover it all. So I've chosen to focus on how offering forgiveness impacts us and how being specific about our sins impacts us. So with that, let's get started with the main truth that we can draw from our line today. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And that is that Forgiveness is a central part of the Christian life. Whether we want to give it or not, whether we want to receive it or not, forgiveness is central. It is central to the Christian life. It's not optional. You don't get to opt out of this. You're either doing it or you're not, but it's there. It's not optional. It is quite literally one of the foundational aspects of our whole faith, without which nothing else that we do in Christianity makes any kind of sense. Without that, nothing makes sense. We are called to extend forgiveness to others just as we have been forgiven by God. And that's the second part of our line, the line that most of us don't like to think about. Because if we think about it, then we realize that this is a request to God that is conditional. This request for forgiveness is conditional. When we say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, We are asking God to give us the same amount of forgiveness that we have extended to others. Say that again. When we ask God this, we're asking God to give us the same amount that we give. Now think about the implication of that for a second. Yeah, I see some some faces like, oh no. We are asking God to limit the forgiveness that we can get based on the forgiveness we dish out. All the forgiveness is completely available to all of us if we want it. But we have a role to play in receiving the benefits of God's forgiveness. The forgiveness is there, but we have a role to play in receiving the benefits of it. We are called to pray for forgiveness of our own sins, recognizing that we are in need of God's grace and mercy, just like everyone else. Now, if all of that is true, if all of that is true, and I think it is, then it should impact our lives by challenging us to be people of forgiveness and to extend mercy and grace to others just as God has extended these things to us. We should seek to be reconciled with those who have wronged us and to let go of grudges and resentment, knowing that this is a key aspect of our relationship with God and with others. Colossians 3.13 does tell us this. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Reconciliation is the best outcome for forgiveness. Reconciliation is the best outcome for forgiveness. It's when both parties are brought together again in a harmonious whole. Reconciliation is the goal. But reconciliation is not always possible. So it is the goal. But here, in this life, it is not always possible. And our ability to forgive is not dependent on the other person acknowledging the wrongdoing. So while reconciliation is the goal, it is not always possible, but that does not let us off the hook for forgiveness. Which brings me to the first potential roadblock in this whole forgiveness conversation. Some people might see forgiveness as a sign of weakness or as a way of condoning or excusing the actions of others. It really does feel that way. It really does feel that way, especially if the other person doesn't even acknowledge doing something wrong let alone apologizing for it or asking for that forgiveness. We might think that offering them forgiveness is just letting them get away with it. It's just letting them get away with it. And I see, I see heads nodding because we, we all deal with that. We all deal with that. 
But forgiveness is not about excusing the actions of others or minimizing the harm that they have caused, but rather it's about releasing our own anger and bitterness and allowing God to work in the hearts of others. We can't force anyone to be sorry. We can't. That's why a lot of our evangelism efforts don't work. We tell people they need Jesus, but we can't force them to know. We can just show them a better way, and eventually they come face to face with that. But we can't make them feel sorry about the things they've done. We can only let it go and let God work in their hearts. Ephesians 4.32 tells us, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. And if you want to know how much forgiveness we should be giving out, the answer is as much as God can forgive. That's how much we're supposed to be giving out, as much as God can forgive, which is infinite. Matthew 18, 21, 22 tells us, Dave knows. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 70 times seven times. And that's not a specific number. Like it gives us, and we can do the math, right? But that's, it's a metaphor for all of it. It's a metaphor for don't worry about the number and just do it. Don't worry about the number and just do it. And by the way, if you want to have a great conversation about the passage I just read, talk to Dave Hamer. He's the one who brought this again to my, to my consciousness and helped me realize that Jesus isn't only telling us how much we ought to forgive in this passage. Jesus is also telling us how much we have been forgiven by God in this passage. And that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Dave, you can raise your hand. He's good for this stuff. You want to have that conversation? He's great. Forgiveness is a way of participating in God's work and restoration in reconciliation. And it brings freedom and healing to both the person who extends forgiveness and the person who receives it. Even if they haven't asked for it, they still begin that healing process. Jesus's command for us to forgive others is not dependent on their seeking forgiveness, though. The act of forgiveness is a healing balm for us. It is how we let go and move on. Without it, we are killing ourselves with anger and bitterness and resentment. Science has shown that when we hold on to these emotions, it kills us slowly, unless you're really angry, in which case heart attacks are real, y'all. It's like the old saying goes, resentment is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Jesus has given us the antidote to our own poisonous habit of holding on to grudges and being angry, and it's called forgiveness. Now, the next part of this isn't so much an objection, but again, pointing to the question that was asked at the Bible study on Wednesday, and we discussed this as part of conversation on forgiveness. We were studying 1 John 1, 9, which reads, but if we confess our sins to God, God shows that he is faithful and just by forgiving us of our sins and purifying us from the pollution of all the bad things we have done. So the question came up, do we have to to confess specific sins to God since the Lord's Prayer is pretty general and covers all our sins? That was a great question. Because on the one hand, the Lord's Prayer is very general, covers them all. So if it doesn't say that there, do we need to be specific? Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us is generic. It does cover it all. So do we need to be specific? Doesn't God already know where we've fallen short? It's another way to ask this question. Doesn't God already know? And the answer to that, I believe, to all of that is a resounding yes. Yes, God knows our sins. And yes, we are forgiven for our past wrongs and everything we will do in the future. But let me frame it to you how I framed it to the group because this was really a good discussion. Imagine Angela is angry with me. Hard to imagine, I know. How could she ever? But just stretch your imagination a little bit this morning and imagine that Angela is angry with me. Now, I recognize that she's angry, okay? In my attempt to get out of the doghouse, how do you think it would make her feel if I said something like, I'm sorry for whatever I did that made you mad and I won't do it again? (laughs) Bonnie laughed. She knows how that would make her feel. Do you think she'd believe it? No. How could I possibly be sorry for something I can't even identify? How can I promise to do better when I don't even know where I fell short? But imagine instead that I either already know what I did or Angela has been nice enough to tell me 
what I did. How much more do you think it would mean if I said something like, Angela, I feel terrible. I feel terrible for yelling at you. This isn't an appropriate way to speak to anyone ever, let alone the person I love the most. I am so sorry, and I do not want that to be a part of me or our relationship. I will do better. Do you think that specific confession would hit home a little bit better than a generalized, I'm sorry for whatever I did? Yeah, me too. And I think the same is true with us and God. God does not need us to be specific for God's sake. God does not need us to be specific for God to know what we did. Just like Angela in this scenario, God wants us to be specific in our confession so that we know what we did. So that we know, without a specific confession, we have no starting point from which to launch our journey of repentance and reconciliation. Let me say that one again. Without a specific confession, we have no starting point from which to launch our journey of repentance and reconciliation. Take time. Take time this week to pray the Lord's Prayer every day and focus on the line, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Reflect on the ways that God has forgiven you, because you've been forgiven. And give thanks for God's grace and mercy. Seek out opportunities to practice forgiveness in your daily life. Now, I've been warned that when we ask for these things, they can and will be given. So if you need to seek out opportunities to practice forgiveness, that might mean a little discomfort. And that's okay. Whether this means letting go of small offenses or working toward reconciliation with someone who has wronged you deeply. It can be shallow or it can be deep, but all forgiveness accumulates. Our ability to do this builds up like any muscle. The more we do it, the easier it is to do. The question was brought to me recently, how can I possibly be civil to them so after all that they've done to me? And I'm like, I don't know exactly how, but I'm pretty sure it has to do with this forgiveness muscle. Like, I'm just not worried about drinking that poison anymore. So I let God deal with them and I'll deal with me. Remember that forgiveness is a process and that it may take time and effort to fully extend forgiveness to others. Seek the support and guidance of the Christian community as you work toward this forgiveness. So whether it's this church or some other, it could be the small group you're in. If you're not a part of a small group, you ought to be. We can help you with that. But seek others. Seek the support of others while doing this. We are not required to confess our sins to each other. That is not part of the requirements. God will forgive us regardless. James 5, 16 tells us, so own up to your sins to one another and pray for one another. In the end, you may be healed. Your prayers are powerful when they are rooted in the righteous life. So while not required, it can be helpful. It can be helpful to confess some of this stuff to some trusted people who are gonna hear it out and help you through with no judgment or as little as they can possibly muster. And finally, be specific with God when confessing your sins to God. Yes, God has already forgiven you of your sins. And yes, our line today is general, a blanket request. And yes, God already knows what we need even before we need it. But being specific with our confessions is for our benefit, not God's. It is only by being specific, by specifically naming the places where we must improve, that we can take steps toward being more like Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen.